Okay, if you hear weird crunching noises, it's because I just made popcorn. And I may or may not eat some while playing. I mean, can you blame me? The friggin' load time, or the, the travel time between missions is ridiculous. Mm hmm. Right, going to the back of the, the ship. I seriously, I keep getting, keep getting like butterflies when I'm thinking about it. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I think it is. I think it's the. Uh, I was actually kind of hoping for an older dude to romance in this game. But they never make older guys. Not often, anyway. Thane, Thane was 10 years older than you. I don't know. Sue me. I like older guys. <laughs> Young guys are fine, too. So are girls. Young and old girl. Young and older girls. Everybody's all good to me. Come on, Kalo. It is a bit unhealthy to be stuck in the past like that. It's good to remember, but you also have to be able to move forward. How are things, Suvi? We might have a problem. I was running some numbers, mass balances and such. The Tempest is carrying about 70 kilos of extra mass. I think something's aboard that doesn't belong. Um... What? 70 kilos is enough mass for another person. Our internal sensors aren't getting anything, but they're not as powerful as a Pathfinder's scanner. Can you take a look? Um. All right, I'll look around the ship and has, see what uh, I can find. What? Is there legit somebody who's... If it if it's I will laugh if it's Reyes, but I also I I but that was not actually my first thought. My first thought is literally, oh uh, what the heck? I actually don't know how much seventy kilos is, so I don't know if that's an average weight for a man. Oh was, what? No extra mass in the airlock. Too bad. It'd be easy to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm evil. I mean, or but but people bring stuff off and on the ship like you know I, I, we couldn't it couldn't couldn't be that precise oh um I didn't know I could scan that none of the equipment in here would produce extra mass <coughs> readings okay guys how's it going what do you think there's, uh, possibly somebody snuck on board? I mean, my pie jack weighs more. That's cool art. Well, uh, let's check the video center, I guess. Nobody up here? Okay. Or nothing. I'm kind of inclined to think that Liam brought something on board too. That's another idea. That Liam brought something he shouldn't have. I'm gonna go check my room, actually, because if it is, if it is Boyo, if it is Rez, it might be in my room. Little sneaky bugger. <laughs> Sam, somebody in my room. Our room. Pie Jack. 
Pajak, is there somebody in here? He's just a bull buggy. He doesn't know what he's doing. Sam, I need to talk to you. Sam. I want to talk to you, Sam. I want to tell you about my love life and my adventures. And I know you're there, but I want to talk to you with... What? Hmm. Crumbs on the deck. You found them too? I think something's eating our stores. So there's an animal. No extra mass in the bathroom. Phew. 70 kilos is a lot to flush away. Caught you napping. Do all Angara snore, or just you? You all humans oh. whimper in their sleep. Oh! Or just you? Wow. Oh. Yo, boys. You guys are just the cutest bromance I've ever seen in my life. Let me scan it. Okay. That's my room. Blah, blah, blah. Check what about. Hey. What the? Oh, man. Okay, so it's not a real one, but she's she is studying. Respect what? Oh. Oh, I can refund everybody here. Okay. Wait, what? Hmm. Right, right, right. Okay. I'm pretty sure the crumbs are being left by my pie jack, but I could be wrong. So the Turians kick out the genophage, basically destroy our people, and they get a pat on the back and a seat on the council. And what do I get? A medal. A medal? From who? My buddy made one out of a piece of scrap and pinned huh. it to my chest. Still got it somewhere. He's so sentimental. A metal. That's perfect. Perfect and horrible. What? Oh. Well, Liam's claims of charge diffusion are dubious. Furniture doesn't get this worn without providing comfort. Which, it should be noted, is not the same as being comfortable. So, Liam is... Really, really comfortable on his couch? Like, what? Got it. Suvi, that extra mass is behind the storage room bulkhead. Behind it? It looks like a construction mech welded what? right into the hull. Scanning the parts has activated an audio log. I think I know what that's about, Ryder. Come up to the bridge. Okay, so it's a callow thing. All right. So Reyes didn't email me at, or freaking sneak onto my ship after freaking. I'm mad now. Oh, can I just find him in the slums though? I might do that. Um, BT Dubs, buddy, Jallo, Callow, um, if your friends have left surprises for us, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Those parts you found welded in the storage room, I recognize them. From where? They belong to the ship's lead designer, Lucille Diawara. She broke her back during construction. But Lucille wouldn't abandon her ship. She converted a construction mech into a rig she could wear. She must have welded it into the hull. Her artist's signature. I like it. Not even a broken back could stop her dream. Sam, didn't you find an audio log with Lucille's rig? C can you play it? Sam found my construction gear then. Well done. 
One of you Pathfinders got the Tempest. Mason Barra, Zevin Rika, Matriarch Ishara, Alec Ryder. You were the best of us. Dad's gone. Makes you wonder how many other Pathfinders made it. We'll find out. It's what you do. Take care of my ship and each other. Whatever is in Andromeda, you're the Milky Way to them. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. I never thought I'd hear Lucille's voice again. She really cared about the Pathfinders. Enough to give them her rig. For luck. Lucille made it a part of the Tempest. Let's keep it that way. I'll see to it, Ryder. Thanks. Now let's go make her That's proud. That's really cute. I like that. That's so interesting. Acquired 29 Andromeda viability. What exactly does that do? Um, so I talked to you. It's all good. Let's make the rounds once more. Let's do everything on the same floor first. I'm getting really mad at you about that. That was weird. Okay, bye. What do I have to do to get you to like me, PB? Oh, wait. I think I have a request. Wow, you're in the wrong spot, girl. Betra. Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh, Betra, you're freaking... That's so nice! I don't deserve it. I don't deserve your niceness, Betra. Yo, Drac. Hey, kid. Why can't I ask you why you wear bones or on you? Does a pie jack scratch its butt? Tell me more about fighting Ket. Fire and explosives are good against anything with heavy armor. Or anything, really. Generally, no one likes being set on fire. Generally? There's a story behind this. Wise. Ha, there sure is. You mentioned that people oh, but generally have you been set on don't fire? like being set on fire. <laughs> he likes being set on fire. Ask. So, about four oh my gosh. Years ago, <laughs> oh my gosh. Decade, I even have popcorn. Me and my outfit were pinned down during a skirmish with another merc group. So I pull off my usual stunt, charge ahead and breach their barricade. Pop my flamethrower and get ready to let go. Only to see them all screaming and running away. Turns out I crashed through a shipment of Turian brandy on my way in. Never even noticed I was on fire. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Never seen a pack of mercs panic that badly before. A flaming Krogan coming for Got you. Any oh stories my gosh. Or to share? Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Scratch its butt. <laughs> Tell me more about fighting. Ryder, you're so boring Descendant. sometimes. Mm. Keep your distance. You Don't are let so them boring get sometimes. you in those force fields. Pop that little orb, then shoot him in the head, just like anything else. We can talk more later. Sure. It bugs me I can't just drop down to the bottom layer of my ship. Hey, Ryder. What's the story? Mm. Uh, bye. Good talking to you, Gil. Mm. Anytime. Cora, anything new? Oh, we should go talk to Jal, too. And Liam. Where's Liam at? That vault on Aya was so gorgeous, so alive. And Meridian might be the key to the others. No wonder the Archon wants to control it, like everything in Helios. See you later, Cora. I'll be here. Oh my gosh, there's so much to do. 
Wait. I gotta tell Liam about movie night. Movie night's ready. Liam, where you at? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Or, uh, Lexi. Oh, I need to cut out to Lexi, too. Jaw Liam. Okay, he's out there with, uh, hanging. Hanging. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, up we go, up we go, up, 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 up. What? There's nothing to scan anymore. Chill out. Oh. That's right. You guys are in there. Wait. Oh, crap. I should talk to Jal first. I got a copy of the Nexus's movie library. Thanks. I'll look through it. It's probably all agricultural learning vids, but there might be something good. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Is that all right? The Roka go to Kadara and recruit the desperate. That's I've heard true. a Roka recruiter weaving his magic. Even I was convinced. Um, do you have a mate? A partner? I don't. Oh, okay. Not for a long time. Um, um uh, Did we already ask that? I think you're interesting I did. and Yep. Well, great. That's uh -huh. it? You are a lovely woman. Okay, then. Yep, bye. Well, enough about that. I'll see you later, Joel. Stay strong. I'm so glad you and, and Liam are friends. I also like that you get a cutscene every time you talk to him. Still waiting on our visit to Aya. Right, Useful, right. Okay, but bye. Also fun. Looking forward to it. We'll talk later. I know it. And is Lexi in here? Not anymore. Oh, there you are. I love that they move around and chat with each other. Everything all right? Oh, yes. PB and I were just having a debate. You mean argument. No, uh -huh. that would be unprofessional. If you say so. Ryder, um. do you think I'm on the <laughs> I... No, never mind. Don't answer that. Let's just talk about something else. Are you okay? Uh, let's check crew morale. How do you think the crew is holding up? I'm happy to share what I can without violating patient confidentiality. Anyone in particular? I sort them in their files and my brain by species. How do you think the human crew members are handling things? There's a lot of them. How's Cora doing? Cora's commando training makes her think Asari ah. have all the answers. Just because we live longer doesn't mean we can't screw up. It just means we have more time okay. to make mistakes. Gil? Gil likes to use humor as a defensive technique. He'd rather bury himself in the nomads than tackle emotions head on. Suvi okay? Suvi's strong sense of faith keeps her grounded. I'm not spiritual, but there's a beauty in how her mind rationalizes religion mm. and science. How's Liam? Increasingly reckless, even for Liam. Almost like he's trying to Me? impress someone. Who? Me. Be careful there. Liam looks up to you. It'd be easy for him to put you on a pedestal. Not having that. I'd like to check in on the non-human crew. Ask away. How's Phoebe? Is PB all right? She's avoiding me. Probably thinks I'll poke her with a needle if she gets too close. To be fair, you're always giving me shots. I love her. Not in the hallway. Is Jal doing okay? He's adjusting. The rest of us have at least some understanding of each other's cultures. But to Jal, we're all outsiders. It's a lot to take in. Tell me about Vetra. Vetra's used to have. That being said, I think she could use a little me time. How's our Solarian? He's quite tight-lipped about himself, though. Is Drac good? That old bastard's always 
good. Okay, bye. I've never met anyone who can be so stubborn and so appreciative. A couple of people's changed. Thanks but for the insight. Not many. I'll let you get back to it. I'll be here if you need me. Journey so far. So Reyes isn't on here. Do you? Is there a way to keep track of how things are, like with? Oh shoot, we got a new one. Okay. You exhibit hard empathy. Uh, it'd be more fun to say that I've noted that you are impulsive with your infection. Oh. Wow. I was hoping they would keep track of it really, really subtly. You've noted that you are more impulsive with your infection, but not as impulsive in the field. I didn't include this in my report. This is just between us. I would add, you're quick to use your warmth and humor. K, 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 K. Oh, good. I'm so glad because I've tried to actually be professional. That's so cool. I have, I have... I have uh, intentionally tried to be more, prof like not more, but like even from the get go, I would I would at least do try to do like one professional, like the first interaction with somebody would be like the professional, like I'm the pathfinder, like she's trying to be the pathfinder, right? But then her natural, natural like casual, humoristic, sarcastic nature, or whatever, shows pretty quickly. But she tries to you know have this professional idea of pathfinder, you know. Um, and we also try, we, because we can be funny and sarcastic and casual, but we reason through things, you know, and like we use the logic and stuff like that, but we do also, we can react passionately to things, but when, you know, on occasion we do, you know, react in a logical or professional manner. That's so cool that it notices. Ah, I'm so happy. I'm happy. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, known associates. PB. Oh, okay. Okay. Since I didn't like my original reading, basically of the of the known associates, because I was eating popcorn at the time because I was starving, and all I did was like laugh occasionally, and it sounds really stupid. Um, I'm just going to go through now and reread them since that's usually what I do, but I just constantly feel like for some reason with this game that I just have to keep rushing it and so I don't read a lot of the things, but like that's what I do, so I'm going to do it now. <laughs> but this is PB. PB describes herself freely as the foremost Milky Way expert on the Remnant and their technology. It is difficult to verify her qualifications for this, as many Nexus personnel records have been lost. DNA and fingerprint matches give the name Pelasari P. Bissau. Although, according to the revival schedule, the indiv that individual should be and still be in stasis. PB's only comment is nothing like getting a head start. Piecing together information from Eos and the Nexus, PB was born on the planet Hytania in the Milky Way. After voyaging to Andromeda on the Nexus, she left the station some months ago to explore the Helios Cluster alone and became fascinated by the Remnant. She has classified and dismantled several types of remnant bot, but she prefers to keep her findings private for now. Psychologically, PB demonstrates both extremely high intelligence and hyper-individualism. Her restlessness is typical of many Asari in their maiden phase of life, though few go so far as to visit another galaxy. Kalojath was born on Sirkesh and, quoting directly, into a life so boring even you couldn't calculate it. So boring even you couldn't calculate it. Uh, pushed towards a lucrative but dull bureaucratic career with Parai... Parohe Aerospace, Kalo became more interested in flying the starships he was meant to be cataloging. He eventually left Sir Kesh for formal pilot training and joined Parohe's competitor as a test pilot. Internal emails show that when Andromeda Initiative was building teams to develop their survey rep vessels, Parohe Aerospace warned against recruiting Kalo so fervently that Jin Garson's interest was piqued. Kalo claims that the prospect of the initiative was intriguing enough to make him join the Tempest design team, testing her early fly prototypes, or flying her early... Her early prototypes, uh, running stress tests in regions like the Neiman Abyss, and rumor has it helping to acquire advanced technology. Kylo has an acute photographic memory, even by Solarian standards. This may be linked to his unusual motor responses, though he discourages my speculation. The Andromeda Initiative's re record on Vetronix are sparse. She states that she is from Palavin, but has also disclosed that she is not recognized as a formal citizen of Turian society, never having entered boot camp. 
It appears she left Palavin at an early age and spent most of her life in the outer reaches of Council Space, never settling down in one place. A uh, veteran was recruited into the initiative by Nath Morkesh, who lists her as a business associate and recommended her on the basis of her street smarts, adaptability, and familiarity with most weapons. Vetra's only other recorded family is her sister, Sid Sidera Nix, who accompanied Vetra on the journey to Andromeda on board the Nexus. A footnote in Vetra's file indicates that she may have been part of an unnamed mercenary band that was hired to steal sensitive military secrets from a base on Manet. The culprits were never caught. Technical Officer Gil Brody is chief engineer aboard the Tempest. After traveling to Andromeda aboard the Nexus, records show that Gil was woken from stasis roughly a year ago to assist with the construction efforts before prepping the Tempest itself. There are no records of Gil's early life, as he, he explains he was an undocumented street kid from one of Earth's megatropolis cities. Though unschooled, Gil likely showed a remarkable aptitude for mathematics and spatial reasoning since at 10, he often broke into a local scrapyard to dismantle and repair destroyed shuttle engines. In time, he was caught and sentenced to a steady job, which is hilarious. Gil's mechanical expertise eventually drew him off-world to numerous colonies across the Milky Way. His unconventional work drew the attention of Vetronix, who agrees she was always on the lookout for new contacts. Vetra claims she persuaded Gil to join the initiative. Gil claims he won Vetra's initiative clearance in a poker game and exchanged it for a guaranteed seat along with his friend Jill. He remains an invaluable member of the Tempest crew. Though, although young by Asari standards, Lexi Tapero is regarded as one of the most skilled doctors in the Andromeda initiative. Born on the crime-ridden space station Omega, Lexi began her medical career by stitching up her father, a Turian bouncer, at the Afterlife nightclub, where her mother was also employed as a dancer. In her screening interviews, Lexi states her parents' dream was for her to get off this rock and live a life worth talking about. Following her parents' wishes, Lexi left Omega to continue studying medicine as well as psychology in the Citadel, where she eventually met Harry Carl Carlisle. Carlisle convinced her to join the initiative as the Hyperion's physician. Although there was some confusion around assigning an Asari to the human arc, Lexi's credentials and expertise in alien anatomy quickly silenced any concerns. By her own admission, Lexi is a workaholic. On or off the table, I have a hard time not dissecting people. Figuratively, of course. One of her many goals in Helios is to improve her bedside manner and to learn to appreciate the moment. As verified by Na Nexus Records and his own claims, the Krogan mercenary Nak Mordrak is among the oldest beings to join the Andromeda Initiative. He originally traveled on the Nexus along with many other members of Clan Nakmor, but left after the Nexus uprising. Born on Tachanka around 700 CE, Drak was a young warrior when the Krogan rebellions began in earnest. He and his Krant accounted for over 200 kills, which Drak claims includes three of the then newly found Council Spectres. Nice. After the Solarian design genophage ended the rebellion, various bounties and military bulletins showed Drak chose a new path as a pirate and soldier of fortune for whatever conflicts came his way. Over centuries of fighting, multiple injuries required several of his limbs and organs to be replaced with cybernetics. Eventually, Drak says, his search for one last horizon brought him to Andromeda. Drak did not travel alone. He accompanied most of his clan to Andromeda, including granddaughter Nakmor Kesh and clan leader Nakmor Mordo. Kesh and Drak maintain a close relationship, exchanging regular messages no matter where their duties in Helios take them. Sam, self-examination being important for sentient beings, I was encouraged to write this entry by Alec Ryder. I am a simulated adaptive matrix, a new generation artificial intelligence. Unlike most AI, I link to a neural implant that gives me access to my host's sensory and emotional responses. Put simply, I have direct understanding of the human experience, which allows me to grow beyond the bounds of logical programming. In return, I lend my quantum computing power and rational analysis to Pathfinder's mission. I am physically located in a server bank installed in SAM node above the Arc Hyperion, but quantum entanglement technology allows instant communication anywhere. In the event of catastrophic injury or death, protocol dictates that my command be access be transferred to the next Pathfinder candidate in line. I wonder who our next uh, candidate is. Probably my brother, but he's in a coma. Scott, born your younger twin on the Citadel space station in 2163, Scott grew up knowing the station was a gateway to the entire Milky Way. In his orientation interviews, he claimed this fostered a longing to step through the gateways to adventure. With informal training aided by Alec Ryder's N7 background, Scott joined the System Alliance military and was assigned to an outpost near Arcturus station overseeing Relay 202. A primary route to Arcturus, this mass relay leads to contested space and has an unsavory reputation. Scott was needed to protect Arcturus, but also had a front row seat to everyone else going off to fortune and glory. When Alec Ryder was dishonorably discharged due to his AR research, internal memos show that this also effectively ended Scott's career, making Andromeda a more attractive option for the adventure he sought. On arrival in Andromeda, Scott's cryopod was damaged and his revival process interrupted. Dr. Lexi Tapero advised keeping him in a medically induced coma to allow him to awaken naturally. Alec. Born on Earth in 2129, Alec Ryder says his love of new frontiers was fostered by a childhood in the Sierra Nevadas. Nice. According to his service record, he joined the Alliance military and was eventually assigned to John Grissom's nice historic expedition through the Sharon Relay. 
His experience made him a candidate for what would later be known as the N7 training back on Earth, where he met Dr. Ellen Harlow. After their marriage, Alec continued military service, most notably on Shagzi in the first contact war against the Turians. Assigned as a military attaché to the Citadel in the late 20, 2160s, Alec became interested in artificial intelligence as a means of human advancement. Kind of sounds cerberus doesn't it? His pursuit of this illegal technology led to a dishonorable discharge from the Alliance military. Contacted by the Andromeda Initiative, Alec found a sponsor to help complete his work. I am the product of, the, a product of that research, assisting not only the initiative, but Alec's new role as a pathfinder. Soon after our arrival in Andromeda in 20, 2819, Alec Ryder died during operations on Habitat 7. Cora. Lieutenant Cora Harper bleh, bleh, is a human biotic and formerly an officer in the Systems Alliance military. Her screening interview states that she was raised in poverty on an independent cargo freighter, joining the Alliance at 18 to obtain training for her powerful biotic abilities. However, Cora claims her superiors to her talents as a liability, supported by test scores showing her abilities spike at abnormally high levels. She was transferred via the Citadel Council's Valkyrie program a subset of their interspecies military integration plan, and placed with the Asari Commando Unit Talian's Daughters. Though the activities of Asari Huntresses are typically class sealed for 5,000 years, Korra has freely shared her experiences on the record, peacekeeping, counterterrorism, and hunting fugitives. When she left Talian's Daughters for the Andromeda Initiative, no reason is recorded. Korra's Huntress training and biotic capability made her a candidate for Alex Ryder's second-in-command, and if warranted, his successor as Pathfinder. I wonder if she's the next one, then. Jal Ahmad Darav is a trusted member of the Angaran Resistance who has chosen to join the crew of the Tempest to observe and assess us. With our contact with the Angaran species in its earliest days, Jal is thankfully forthcoming on the subject of himself and his people. What records Jal has made available show he is a middle child of a large and prestigious family. He was raised by multiple mothers, apparently customary for Angara, listening to the tales of his family's heroic deeds and scientific discoveries from a young age. At 16, he followed his grandmother's footsteps to fight against the Ket, joining the organized Angaran resistance as a scout, tracker, and extremely skilled sniper. In time, Jal established himself as Ephra's trusted lieutenant. Though I only have a small baseline for Angara, voice, stress, and body language analysis suggest that Jal feels familial pressure to achieve his own heroic status. Jal himself only says that everyone needs their own story. Suvi Anwar is a member of the Nexus Science Team and holds advanced degrees in astrophysics and molecular biology. In a screening interview, she stated that she was from a large, rather boisterous family of five children. Her neuroscientist mother and mathematician father exposed her and her siblings to science from a young age, which sparked a lifelong love to the subject. While pursuing her PhD in molecular biology, Suvi was handpicked for a team doing cutting-edge biophysical and cybernetics research. After a year, the team was headhunted by a black ops organization for a classified biomedical project. Suvi was extended an invitation but declined, opting to reinforce her focus, her attention on her own projects. And I think I said it when I when I recorded this initially, but I'm betting that was Cerberus. And if it had been done the way, if she had been recruited, she probably would have helped reconstruct Shepard when Shepard was taken by Cerberus and reconstructed. So that was cool. Liam Costa is a human security and crisis response specialist with civilian tactical training. His screening interview states that he was born on Earth, but his parents specialized in interplanetary policy law, and the family moved frequently. Their primary residence was split between London and the Citadel. Liam entered university for engineering, but left to train for law enforcement. Though initially driven, he was only briefly stationed as a police officer and described leaving as a necessary move for all concerned. He transitioned to the multi-species effort of heavy urban search and crisis response. If Liam was disillusioned in law enforcement, service records show that it was not mirrored in crisis response. The human contingent, Heavy Urban Search Terrain 1, reported that Liam performed exceptionally in all conditions. Liam says that the, this is when he learned of the Andromeda Initiative after meeting former Alliance personnel at a post-hostility relief action, whatever that is. His multidisciplinary skills set him apart, and Liam was handpicked by Alec Ryder to support the Pathfinder team. Ellen Ryder, formerly Harlow, was a pioneering designer of biotic implants. In the 2150s, she was leading biomedical cybernetic researcher at in Rio de Janeiro, when human biotics began to emerge as a scientific field, Ellen found possible applications for her work in neurointegrative wetware. Her early designs for biotic implants formed the framework for later L2 and L3 models. Ellen met Alec Ryder when they was posted to Rio for N7 training before the first contact war. She eventually joined Alec on the Citadel when he was posted there as a military attaché and gave birth to fraternal twins on the station in 2163. Unfortunately, Element Zero, the catalyst for biotic mutations, is a hazardous material poorly understood in the early years of human biotics. After repeat accidental exposures, Ellen eventually developed a terminal neurodegenerative dis disorder, later known as ANO, ENO, and ANID. In her final years, Ellen Ryder built what would later become the Pathfinder implants designed to sync with the AI partner Alec Ryder was developing. Ellen died before my creation was fully realized. So there we go. There's everybody. Hope you guys liked it. <laughs> Wasn't too long. Okay.
All right, cutting in once more to read this again because I apologize for all the popcorn eating. At the time, my microphone was set right next to my arm and I didn't really think about the fact that the popcorn was right next to it and it's really freaking loud. But I'm gonna reread the, I think I only reread, I reread this one. Uh, sorry, Pathfinder. Publicly stating she was joining the Andromeda Initiative for spiritual reasons, matriarchy Shara's centuries of diplomatic experience and popularity among the Asari made her a strong candidate as Pathfinder. In her younger years, she served as she served the Asari Republic as a judge before joining Thessia's diplomatic corps, and was more recently the architect of peace accords that ended seven centuries of bitter conflict in the Kormoth system. She left the Milky Way aboard the Asari Ark Lesuina in 2185. And I pointed out, I just listened to myself on my original recording, I pointed out that it was interesting that she's not actually a warrior, technically. She was more diplomatic. Um, and then I just kind of skimmed through this with the Pathfinder implants. And then we, we already read that. And the Turian Pathfinder, born on Palavin and a decorated engineer in Blackwatch, which I also pointed out previously in the real, in the original recording that Blackwatch is, I remembered that Blackwatch is the Turian special ops, basically. Um, May, Mason Barrow was touted by the hierarchy to be a shining example of a Turian citizen. There were concerns among initiative leadership about whether or not he would leave his comfortable life behind. To become the Turian Pathfinder, but Mason was eager so long as he could name his replacement, Avatus Rick, a former Spectre. And I will let my original recording go from here because I got really excited after this. Ooh! Oh man, I was gonna say, said, um, as he was eager to come, so long as he could name his replacement, Avatus Rick, a former Spectre. Internal e emails and screening interviews state Mackin and Avatus met in the field and suggested their relationship made it more than platonic. I got some gay Turians. This makes me really happy. Alright, bro, I'm going after the Turians first. I'll find your lover. Oh boy. And possibly the last one. Apparently, I read a little bit more of. Tyrion Condros. In his screening interviews, Tyrion Condros states he is named after an ancestor who captured a dreadnought in the Krogan Rebellions and he was expected to live up to the name. After beginning boot camp at the traditional age of 15, Condros rose to the ranks and was assigned to Sag Sagerius VIII, one of the hierarchy's counter terrorism divisions. Persistent rumors on the Nexus claim that Kandros sent, was sent to investigate the Andromeda Initiative when the hierarchy became suspicious about its activities. Condros refuses to comment on former operations, citing family pressures as the reason. He later joined the initiative. During the early days of the Nexus's arrival, Kandros left the station to act as a protection detail for a prospecting team and was captured by the Ket. He managed to lead several other captives in an escape and returned to the Nexus, eventually founding a volunteer militia to defend the station. I think that's the last one, and you'll, you'll see why in a second, but thank you for putting up with the popcorn eating. I don't care. All right, so Reyes is a mystery, obviously. Mm, you know what, I'm gonna crack open another soda because I can. Why? I'm just kind of curious why Bioware gives all its, not all, but many of its in alien species the dog leg look. You know, like a double jointed knee thing? Why? Even out here in a uh, Andromeda, the Angarans get dog legs. I wish I could play the music throughout the ship. Liam's planning. It seems like a great idea, even if things are unsettled at the moment. I'd love to help out. Stop by when you can. Oh, okay. I'm glad I talked to you. How are those jokes coming, Sam? My algorithm has reached the end of its iteration. <laughs> Do you believe my sense of humor has improved? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. 
I estimate it is now equal with your own skill at dissembling. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, Sam. Sam. Nothing more. Oh, Sam, you are, you are, you're a treat, Sam. Um, Suvi. Have a Suvi really quick. I do want to go to Eos as well. Liam says he's planning a movie night. That's the idea. He's putting it off because it didn't seem right after seeing the exaltation facility. But now there's a delay. I had a thought. Every vid's better with snacks, right? I found an Angaran recipe for these little morsels you can make from a local Helios plant. But it's rare and... You want me to look for one? Oh, would you? I'd love to, you know, be social oh my and gosh. things. Oh my gosh. I will do it for you. 